Well, hello, minders. Welcome back to the Mind of Watercolor. I got a little bit of a figure study for you today, and I'm just uh, kind of working on uh, a line study of it right now digitally. Not really a value study, I guess. I was just trying to work out, make sure I understood the proportions and the folds of the cloth, get a bead on that, and try to get an accurate drawing, and I'm going to actually use this to transfer down to my sketchbook paper. This is an iPad Pro using Procreate and the Apple Pencil. Again, it's not necessary to use digital tools like this. They don't necessarily offer a lot of advantages, a few, but I always say don't do it if you're not comfortable with digital. I'm going to transfer this down to my drawing surface with the Etcher mirror. Uh, I used this with the elephant if you saw that episode. Uh, I will leave a link down there in case you don't know what the Etcher mirror is. And here is my pencil drawing all transferred down. I forgot to flip it. Uh, the Etcher mirror comes with an app where you use an app. And you can flip the drawing before you transfer it. And I forgot to do it. But it works either way. Either left facing or right facing. But let me talk to you a minute about the ballpoint pen. Which is what I'm going to use here to finish out the drawing. So I'm finishing up this drawing in ballpoint pen. And this is another reason I'm doing this as a study. I call myself a chronic experimenter. You've probably heard me say that before. And I am. I just always wonder what different mediums will do and combining different mediums. I really am loving ballpoint pen as a drawing medium. It's sort of the other pencil, if you will. It will do things that regular pen and ink won't do. It will give you a deeper line. It won't give you a solid, solid black line, like say a micron. It gives you a, a little bit lighter line, but it will shade in ways that you can only do with a pencil. So it has a greater range. It has the ability to give you line, but also some subtle shading. It's like combining the best aspects of pen and pencil. The drawback being that you can't erase it. So I just wanted to mention that. Does it have any particular advantages over pencil? Yeah, it will get darker without putting graphite on the paper that will travel with the wash. So if I wanted to ink or apply a drawing to my watercolor paper that had some deep lines, some darker lines, but I didn't want it to be as stark or as linear looking as say regular pen and ink, like with Pigma Microns or Nib and Ink, this is a good in-between. It's permanent. If you give it proper time to dry, it won't run with the water. You can get some subtle shading. Actually makes for a nice little sketching medium under watercolor. And so I'm, I'm sort of testing that idea more thoroughly, more than just in theory and the little bit of sketching that I've done with it. Now these are some of my favorite. This Bic Atlantis is a nice fine point ballpoint pen. The Zebra F301 is probably my favorite fine point ballpoint pen. Uh, I've been trying a Caran d'Ache. It's okay. The one I'm using today is a Lamy and it's a medium point and actually the medium points while they don't give you as fine a line they do a better job of shading so that's what you'll see when I do the ballpoint pen drawing experiment 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 I love to do it yeah so with that uh, I proceed to ink this in with ballpoint pen and you'll even see me doing a little bit of that shading one of the things I wished I hadn't done is quite as dark on the facial features because I really wanted those to be a little more colored to the flesh tones of the woman and they ended up being kind of dark um, but it's all right I mean this is a study and it has a little bit of a line and wash quality in the face so that's okay but that's why I do these experiments you know to learn and all of this will show better than pencil would under the watercolor, which is another reason I did it. And I can get that subtle shading, as I mentioned, uh, without it running with the watercolor. Now I'm going to do the background first, and a lot of times I like to do this because especially where uh, very distinct lighting situations exist, uh, I want to make sure I get it right. And the, the background going in first, or the darkest areas, the skirt's not the background, but the lower skirt, but uh, they help me to get the values right in the highlights. So I'm, I'm including, sort of including some of the skirt uh, in the background washes because uh, it's dark and I want there to be some continuity. I want it to kind of blend. But most of this is going to be painting around the figure. So 
It's a silver brush, black velvet, flat, half inch flat. Got a blob there, way too intense purple, as you can see. I'll be throwing in some yellow browns that will kind of kill that and uh, some intentional backwashing. I want the background to be loose and interesting. That's why I let that drip happen right there. And um, you'll, you'll see, like I said, some backwashing, some various brush stroke techniques by the end of the video. And uh, some sort of warm yellow browns will go in and kind of kill some of that purple. Didn't mean to get that much purple right there. There's where I ended up putting in some excess water and it backwashed. And I liked it. I'm carrying that background, that warm color of background right into her face. But I'll modify that to more flesh tone in a little bit. Just fuzzing out an edge right there. All right, so I want to talk about this palette for a moment. This uh, palette was just something I kind of did on a whim. Uh, I was looking for a newer palette to combine number of different brands. Well, I guess just three brands. Daniel Smith, M. Graham, and My Merry Blue. I wanted to take some of my favorite colors in each of those brands and see what I could put together just for the heck of it. And then, um, you know, making up a palette is is kind of fun to go through and think about and and think through what colors will work and largely i do either figures portraits or landscapes so keeping that in mind but if you've watched my channel for long you may have picked up or seen this video here where i made this micro palette i will link to that episode if you want to see i go through and give the rationale for the color choices this was a six color palette that I used in a little Altoids tin. A lot of you since have asked uh, what I think of it, how, how have I used it, have I used it? I really haven't. It turns out a couple things. This mixing space was too small and I've been working on a little palette extender, uh, which I think will work. My main use for this was gonna be just tenting some drawings, the mainly outdoor or plein air drawings and just to have a few colors to bring with me so I could tint it and splash some color in there. And honestly, that situation has not come up. I also, since that time, have bought this little uh, magnetic palette, which is just a little bit bigger, but thinner, and has a bigger mixing area, and I think might take the place of what I intended this to be. So all of that is, is kind of a side. Um, I just wanted to bring this micro palette up again because that gave birth to this. And this is the palette that I am using today on this figure study. But I'll tell you, the more I use this palette, the more in love I am becoming with these colors. It's just turning out to be very versatile for the type of painting and what I do. And I will have to do an episode probably just to break this palette down. Um, but I wanted you to see what it was. Uh, now, I haven't used all the colors in this painting. I've used mostly uh, the blues here, a little bit of the magenta, nickel quin gold, and uh, some of the amethyst genuine. The colors are Daniel Smith Moon Glow, M. Graham Anthoconone Blue, Daniel Smith Cobalt Blue, M. Graham Turquoise, M. Graham Viridian, Daniel Smith Appetite Green Genuine, M. Graham's Nickel Quinacridone Gold, M. Graham's Quinacridone Rust, Daniel Smith Scarlet, Pyro Scarlet, M. Graham's Purely Maroon, My Merry Blues Magenta, My Merry Blues Permanent Violet Bluish, Daniel Smith's Amethyst Genuine, Daniel Smith's Mayan Blue Genuine, Daniel Smith Pimanite Genuine, and Daniel Smith's Jadot Genuine. So those are the colors. If you have any of those or want to check any of those out, I will I'll most likely do an episode where I'll get into why I really am liking these colors and this palette is becoming a new favorite. But all that aside, let's go ahead and get into the painting. So now continuing uh, to block in colors and here's what I was talking about before of just warming up her face. 
Uh, her face was almost completely in shadow, so it's pretty dark. Magenta that I'm using with, mixed with a little bit of Quinn Gold, Nickel Quinn Gold, makes a great flesh tone. But almost all of where you see the flesh tone is in shadow. It's at the top of her arm, which I'm going to leave white. The highlight is very hot. And uh, her sort of top, I don't know what you call the top uh, that she's got over her skirt and blouse, but um, it w had a lot of uh, sort of a floral pattern that was confusing. And you can see it in the photo. I didn't want to put that in, at least for this study. It, it just would have made the picture more confusing. But I'm using some anthraquinone blue, a little bit of cobalt blue, some of the my Mary Blue Permanent Violet. I'm just getting a lot of uh, gray blue violet colors in there. Later you'll probably see me add a little bit more turquoise. Just trying to keep those shadow colors lively, which it was mostly a white top or an off-white sort of cream colored top with, as I mentioned, blue flowers which I'm not putting in. But studying the figure, the posture, and the light. Uh, great light. And just slowly building the values, but it actually was pretty simple to paint. And once I got a lot of the main values and folds in, then it just kind of came a dab and daub process, you know. Darkening the recesses where they needed darkening. As you can see, uh, I'll put the photo up again. This woman was actually watching uh, a cook fire. It was sort of a campfire down below her and had like a spit and all these kettles and things hanging over and that's what she was watching. But I love the, the pose. I thought it looked like a great sort of lost in thought contemplative pose. And I absolutely loved the light. I thought it was just great that way. Now we're getting to the, the dabs and daubs I was talking about. And once I've got the values fairly well established... Uh, I just try to get some brush strokes in there that I think are interesting, but also work for the values. Uh, so they have a purpose. They're not just there just to be a brush stroke. But I think they add some extra energy to the painting, the study. I'm sort of inspired to do this by Dean Mitchell. If you ever uh, look at Dean Mitchell's portraits and figure work, he does a lot of this kind of brushstroke stuff. And I love it. I just started trying it, and I, I do believe it does give uh, the piece some energy. And after uh, looking it over and doing a lot more dabbing and daubing, <laughs> this is the final piece, probably a day later from where I ended the... And I'm pretty happy with that. Thank you, Minders. I appreciate you so much. Thank you, patrons, for supporting and sponsoring this channel. You guys are making it happen. We'll see everybody in the next video. Bye-bye.